On November 8th, Operation al Fajir kicked off at the request of Iraq's Prime Minister, Ayhad Alawi, and the Interior Iraqi government. The Marine Corps' Regimental Combat Team 1 and 7, along with elements of the U.S. Army, were called upon to assault and clear the corrupted city of Fallujah, which had been acting as a safe hold for numerous anti-Iraqi insurgents and various foreign fighters over the past several months. For the Marines of 3rd Battalion, 1st Marine Regiment, out of RCT-1, who have been conducting stabilization and security operations for the past five months in Fallujah's neighboring city of Al-Karma, the assault held a special significance. Yeah, we're really pumped up, ready to go, eliminate all the problems, because I think uh, all the surrounding cities around Iraq, everything was stemming from Fallujah. You know, they were coming in and coming and going pretty much as they pleased. You know, we lost a lot of guys, and a lot of guys got hurt from just uh, roadside IEDs, and you never really saw an enemy. So I don't know one person in my squad, my platoon, that wasn't like, hell yeah, let's go. We're taking this place down. It's going to be a hell of a ride. As the Marines pushed through the city, systematically destroying all the resistance they came across, they braved a barrage of enemy small arms, sniper fire, rocket-propelled grenades, mortars, rockets, and strategically placed improvised explosive devices. In the face of all this, they never lost heart and were far from outgunned as they employed the full spectrum of the Marine Corps' deadly arsenal. Target! We shot small rockets, AT-4s, main tank rounds, tow missiles, anything. If we knew there was somebody in a building, we used our snipers. We, we took the enemy out before we even had to go up and clear it the best we could. And if we had to go in there and clear it, then we went in with everything we had. 203s, fragmentation grenades, clear by fire, use exactly what you have before you have to stand toe to toe. You have, you have it, so why walk, in, walk into a fight without using it? House to house, the Marines assaulted their way through the narrow alleys and booby-trapped streets of Fallujah, many times fighting an enemy who was hyped up on methamphetamines and willing to barricade himself in, fighting to the death. For many platoons, casualties became a reality. One of my squad leaders, you know, he was shot through the helmet, but it was just a flesh wound, thank God, but he's one of my best squad leaders, and it really hurt to lose somebody like that. A lot of Marines looked up to, uh, to that corporal, but it just felt weird seeing somebody uh, get shot that you're standing right next to at that moment. But as always, the Marines had to push on, accomplishing their mission, and for some, this meant assuming the responsibilities of their fallen brethren. Yeah, I mean, you always care about the Marines you left and right, but I went pretty much worrying about, you know, just getting out alive, and then it kind of went from that to I had, you know, guys to worry about, plus myself, you know. It's, people in a leadership position, it puts a strain on them in a combat environment. As they worked to fill their new positions and deal with their losses, they dug deep and found strength. It's really hard to, to keep on pushing and stay real focused when you've got, you know, close friends who've just been killed. You know, if anything, it provided the, the fire and a passion for them to continue the, the job that we started. The battle-hardened Marines fought on day and night with scarce bits of time for sleep and chow as they searched endless houses uncovering stores of enemy munitions, weapons, and IED-making materials. The small unit leaders of the battalion couldn't have been more happy with the Marines' performance under fire. My Marines did exceptionally well. I was, I was surprised beyond all belief. Not one of them was hesitant, went in looking for the bad guys. They were real, they were happy to do it. It was something that they've trained to do. It's the reason they joined the Marine Corps. Operations in Fallujah are ongoing, but with the majority of the heavy resistance destroyed, many believe that the eradication of the insurgency will have positive effects on not only Fallujah, but the entire area surrounding this freshly cleansed city. I think that it sent a message out there, you know, that you can't, you can't have like a safe hold. You can, you can't have a city that you could just, you know, hide in and operate out of. Uh, there were a lot of, a lot of really evil people in that city who were doing all they could to, to try to stop the progress that has been has been made in Iraq in the in the last uh, 18 months. I think now the the new government that's going to be elected in January is going to be set up for success. Many of those who were in the fight feel a great deal of personal satisfaction in their victory. I definitely feel I've made, you know, on my level, some sort of contribution to the greater effort that our country's trying to get done here in Iraq. We did it. You know, we took down the hardest city in Iraq. This is, this is what people joined the Marine Corps to do. You might be in the Marine Corps for 20 years and never get this chance again to take down a full-fledged city full of insurgents, and we did it. Reporting from Fallujah, Iraq, I'm Corporal Jan Bender.